absence of Nigeria from Qatar 2022 a wake-up call to be more intentional about our football administration. It is no more news that Nigeria did not qualify to play in the ongoing biggest competition in football, Qatar 2022. This is the biggest competition since 1994. This is the second time since 1994 when Nigeria made its first appearance at the world stage that the country will be absent in the competition. The other time was Germany 2006. It may seem like the absence of the supposed giant of Africa from the competition for the most prize honor in the world of is inconsequential to the country and its economy, but a deeper assessment of what might have been would prove that this was an opportunity missed on many fronts. Of course, the final results of not qualifying for the World Cup is the consequence of a whole lot of things that are not right in the way we plan and conduct our activities as a nation, like we do with every other aspect of our country. The efforts towards our sporting activities are not intentional. We are a nation with an ever declining local league. The effect of this in recent times is reflective in the composition of the country's senior national team, consisting of a larger percentage of players born and groomed abroad. It appears our football administration are bereft of ideas and are only looking for short ways to success. Hence, the decision to roam Europe for any footballer with Nigerian roots. The effect of, the, of this approach further relegates the need to ensure we have a vibrant local league where enjoying stars can be discovered. Football, out of the many sports Nigerians engage in, has always been a unifying factor for us. The direct and residual income it brings to the economy even with our weak policy is big, the potential giant is even bigger. As a country that has, oh, as a country that has one of the largest youth population globally, which is an opportunity for enhancing its sustainable development and growth through the empowerment of its youth, we should be doing better and more deliberate in the administration of our sporting activities. Oh, thank you. Anyway, I can liken this thing, I can liken it to uh, every other professions we young, young persons or young Nigerians are involved in. For instance, you go to university in Nigeria to read medicine. When you finish, you are thinking of going to Canada or US or UK to practice medicine. You go and read whatever you read in the university mm -hmm. or whatever course you want to do. You want to jackpot in local terms, which means to, to live. Now, when it comes to football, we seem not to care about let me give you an instance. I, I hear the last time that there was a certain, I'm not going to mention his name, there is a certain billionaire in Nigeria, very wealthy billionaire in Nigeria. We all know him. Um, there was this speculation around him having something to do with a football club in, in the UK. And I asked myself, why can't these certain billionaires or other so-called investors, local investors, invest in our local football team? Yes. Why is it that they are more interested in watching when you go to the streets and you see them playing the normal European League or wherever, everybody is glued to their screen. Ask them, do you watch Aimba United or what do you know? I'm not really a football expert. Kanu pillars. But but all those I normally follow up on socio economy uh, socio, uh, issues of socio economic concern mm. which include sports. We are not enthusiastic about our own sports and activities, but we want to know what is happening in UK uh european english premier league or whatever you don't care so the next thing is once you can play ball everybody will start telling you ah let's start praying for you or let's hoping that a football club from uk uh, united kingdom or which other country comes mm. to buy you off so that the question is it's not just a sporting thing it's a nigerian unfortunately it's a nigerian negligence thing where you have government has not been able to put certain food down on policies that can enhance our social economy social economy is broad it's not just all about business business football is an aspect of of socialization and it's also yeah. or sporting activities that brings people together you can call it the social um, socialization that affects the economy you can actually get in investors mm -hmm. it can generate funds for the 
a country, right? Yes. Right. And also, not just the human capital development, it puts your youth, mm. youth to use. So it's like, it's not only just football, everything seems not working. Mm. So the government have to overhaul policies. We're going into 2023. I hope the new president coming in 2023, we see all these things. Youth development, business, uh, youth engagement, employment, mm. providing um, um, uh, uh, opportunities or enabling an um, environment for businesses to thrive. Yeah. That's one aspect. For sports, how do we encourage people that are talented exactly. to see how they can groom them so that they will be so good to attract investors to invest in local sports? Exactly. People can watch, let someone in the US watch the Aimba United or Kano, what do you call them? Kano Pillars. Kano Pillars. I, I, there are many of them that were Wolf. Yeah, you remember uh, Tobia Musa? Yes. That one. Yes. You know, she said something during an interview. You know, she's been practicing, she's been developing herself, but not in Nigeria. Unfortunately. You know, so, you know, she's been. I, um, developing herself, you know. So we we don't we don't um, invest in talents. We don't invest in talents in Nigeria. If we don't see potentials and groom them, like you see a child that can that is very good in athletics, and you you, you cite that talent from when she's seven. If it's if in a foreign country or somewhere else where they, they, they cite talents and appreciate such um, gifts, they start to groom that child from seven. Before you know it, that child is representing the country in Olympics years after so in nigeria we don't um groom talent there's no encouragement it's very for, for the for the sports for the um young people who are interested in sports we like education but you know in foreign countries it's not they're they not keen on education they're not keen on education like i have a friend in the u.s who who did not even go to university he didn't go to university he doesn't have a master's he doesn't have a degree so he just took a tech skill and grooming himself as a developer. And, and he self-trained himself. He's self-taught. He's a self-taught developer. But in Nigeria, yeah, you're looking for a job. They are, they are telling you, okay, if you don't have a 2-2, two -two, you won't get the job. If you don't have a 2-1, you won't get the job. If you don't have a master's, now you're not even looking at this person's ability. So this, what, it, what we are discussing is beyond Qatar 2022. It's an, it's be, it's yeah, an it's, economic it's problem. It's an economic Social problem, economy. yes. Anyway, I, I would like to uh, bring your intention to something briefly. You said we like education and they, they are not. No, let me, I want you to change it this way. Let's look at it from this angle. Actually, they value education abroad than here. Yeah, we don't value education here. Yeah. There's a difference between schooling and education. Yes, mm. we like to like it everything to the four walls of the university yeah, exactly when you go abroad like you said that's your friend is actually educated mm -hmm. very educated yes. he might not necessarily be in a conventional school mm. but he's educated enough for him to solve problems exactly. but yeah we have so many schools that are not even functional and yet our education is zero mm. almost nothing almost i use the word almost because i want i for for people like us and you and too mm. We are we were educated. We schooled here in Nigeria, and we became educated by ourselves. What I mean, almost zero, because education is broad. You have mm -hmm. to talking about value creation, mm -hmm. orientation of the mind, and understanding your environment. Mm -hmm. So, but we are saying that the government alone cannot do this. We don't expect the government. To, in fact, government has no business providing job. You know that narrative of saying we are going to provide job for you is a lie. It, they've mm -hmm. tried it before; it didn't work. Mm -hmm. If you go to advanced world, the government don't provide job for people per se. They provide a neighboring environment for businesses to thrive, private sector, they drive mm. the economy. This private sector will provide the job. But no, when they come outside, they keep using the word, we'll provide job, we'll provide job. You don't have the job to provide as a government. <laughs> you don't. Provide a neighboring environment so that there will be job, a private sector can thrive, mm. and then there will be jobs. For skills development is private government partnership. People can actually invest in sports mm -hmm. to encourage mm -hmm. young people build them up so that they can grow from nigeria to the world stage as nigerian identities not nigerians outside yes so, you're right so um mr shegu, mr. shegu. yeah uh, okay so this, this is my own thought about the whole thing um a few years down the line if you look at our, our performances across all sporting activities you will see that uh, we were doing fine, but at some point it, it began to decline because you see that some certain things that were available then began to be eroded. Uh, we talk about private involvement in many of these things. Yes, in our education, it's, it appears the government has, has handed off that educational sector to the private entities. And that's where you have 
even for us on this set, I can tell you our kids are in private schools, not in a public school. Mm -hmm. They start, you know, nobody trusts the private schools again. But the, the, the thing is this, there is no policy framework that guides and also ensure the enforcement of such policy framework of all of these sectors. For example, in the education sector, where we believe kids are supposed to begin to be groomed in the different aspects of their lives, the, the, the academic aspects, the skills, you know, they begin to identify where a, a child is skilled, if he can run well, if he can play ball, basketball, you know, use their height, the, the, the body composition, you begin to see all of these things. And that's where the clients that we, we say our people want to try as more than us. And that is the result that we already get it with the array of players that we have in our national team as uh, super eagles because most of them were born and groomed in that in, the, in those countries and we run we get to speak with them for them to come back home come and play for nigeria the question is what has happened to those of us that are here yes. now you have private schools who do not all, all they need is just a two or three bedroom apartment to, to house their their, their pupils and students. No arrangement for for uh, a field, a sporting field where you have all these equipment, where you can train. I mean, they, we have killed that sector. Meanwhile, as much as we want to say, yes, everybody should not be looking up to a white collar job. What exactly is the government doing in ensuring that when you leave school, you do not necessarily want to go to a ministry of finance? or Minister of Justice, or a, to look for one bank to work in. How am I going to be able to say, okay, if I'm skilled in dancing, that I can use that same talent, I mean, and bring economic uh, prosperity to the country, to my, to, my, to my community, to my family, without having carrying, I mean, nowadays we have, who, after the first degree, they run ahead to do masters again. We have all become educated, such that there's no one that's, I mean, there, there's no job for us. And other aspects of our lives, we are not, I mean, the government is not doing anything. They have so much have killed this area of our lives, such that the youth just, everybody just look, I mean, we, say, we are in one directional uh, generation. Everybody wants to read, want to come out with this, uh, best the uh, uh, honors in education and begin to look for the white collar job, yes. which I know are very good. These other areas, the talents that we have, we are, are not being harnessed. Nobody to groom them. The government is not intentional about all the skills that you can say. Okay, for youth, you can develop this. For I mean, in terms of singing, in terms of dancing, playing football, yeah. playing basketball. Mr. Shegu, I think what are, you are trying to say is that we are. We are highly we are highly schooled, but not very educated enough to solve that our own it. economic problem. That is it. Mm. That is it. Thank you, Mr. Luashegun Elijah Felix is next after the break. <laughs>